Hey everybody, welcome back to another Booblecraft build. Today we're going to be building a wallet of leather, like this one. This one I built for myself a little while back. And I'm hoping to do a similar design. Bifold, card slots on each side, and then storage pocket back here and a money pocket over here. But yeah, I have a family friend that wants a wallet similar to this, so Gonna build that for him today and you guys can follow along. Let's get started. So, tip one, always use a sharp blade. That was, you saw me struggling there a little bit in the beginning. It was because my blade was pretty dull and I hadn't swapped it out for a little while. But I've got a fresh one now and it makes cutting a lot easier. it up you can see it's a little bit longer than our inside piece for our money flap but that's actually because if you look at this one that I've already built so that there's you can actually not sew this middle part and the wallet can actually stretch and fit once it's actually full of everything you need that outside piece to be a little bit longer so that's that there's our Outside back, or inside, we're also going to be having our three little card slots on one side, our three little card slots on another side, and actually now that I look at it, I'm actually missing one piece that I'm going to have to cut right now, and that is actually this fourth slot that allows you to store a bunch of cards and stuff inside here. So I got a couple more piece. But now you may have noticed that for these inside card flaps I cut edges off on the back ones because you're really not going to see that once it's laid out and it allows less bulge on the edge of the piece so that if your wallet's not super thick right on this edge you kind of want it to be a little less thick there so let's start laying things out and gluing them using large all-purpose contact cement. I find this stuff works wonders for just holding, getting the piece held together and then we'll, we'll do our nice little saddle stitch afterwards. But this, this really works to get the piece all held together. I'm going to use toothpick to apply contact cement onto this edge and you apply it to both surfaces. But also what you want to do is you want to apply it definitely all around the edges and then on these inside flaps you do want to apply on the bottom edge because we're not stitching here 
that is actually what prevents the cards from sliding down too far and gives you that staggered card look inside the wallet. So I'm going to apply that stuff now. Large cement says let it dry for about five, apply it to both surfaces, then let it dry for about five minutes, and then adhere the two surfaces together. You can do that. Always follow the, man here, the manufacturer's instructions if you want. I found that it works just as well if I just brush it onto both pieces, slap it together right away, and then let it sit for at least five minutes. Once you've got everything glued together, you want to just give it a nice, nice tap to really hold it in. one side, three card slots. I'm going to let that sit for at least an hour, maybe a little longer, and then I'm going to be able to stitch that up. So now we've got our inside piece. The piece we just finished is going to go. I'm going to do it on the right side. Then like that, it's going to go on. This is going to be our other piece, our other side. It's going to hold all those pieces, so we'll lay it out, start sketching it up. And then we'll glue this one up and let this dry as well. So we're back. We've got this piece done with our first three card slots. I also went ahead and glued up our other three card slots onto the interior of that piece. Now, we're going to eventually glue this piece down onto our interior back piece as well. But the key thing to remember before we glue this on, since we want this to be an open slot on this inside edge, we're not going to actually glue there, and we actually need to stitch on this front piece to hold down these front three card slots. And then when we glue the other three edges and stitch on there, it'll leave this nice little opening It'll allow us to slide in extra cards and whatnot onto there. First, we got to do this front stitch onto that piece. Stay tuned. All right, everybody. So it's been sitting for a while. It's nice and dry. Card cement's got a nice little hold on everything. Got our card flaps. So what we're going to do now is we're going to stitch up this side, and then we're going to curve and stitch up this side. But when we stitch up the top, we want to adhere that just to the inside piece of the money flap. So just that inside piece. So we're going to stitch this first, not going through to this money flap piece, and then along the top we're going to stitch going to that money flap piece. Alright, now what I'm actually going to do before I even stitch is I'm going to cut out around these edges just a little bit, make it a little, a little nicer than the, the straight square edge. So, a little trick I learned for rounding off the edges, you take a half dollar or any, any curve that you want coin, get it lined up just so it's on this edge and this edge, and then we're going to trim, hold it down, And now, before we actually start doing our saddle stitch on this, what you want to use 
his pricking irons. They look like these little little forks. I got a four millimeter set, that's the size of the hole, so then I get four millimeter thread. Now I'm actually going to stop there and wait to prick these until after I stitch this line and then glue this edge so that neither of the pieces moves after I've pricked it. Alright, so I just saddle stitched up this edge, like we discussed, and then stopped right where we left off with the pricking of the iron holes so that I could then come out here. I'm going to glue this and then prick it along that edge so that I can continue with the same stitch all along this top edge. And the same reason we wanted to sew this first so that we could leave that, cart, that slot open for extra cards. We also want to show this first without using the back piece of the wallet because we've got to leave that open for all your cash. Alright, so we're back. Here's stitched piece. This is a stitching pony. I actually built this one myself. Effectively, a big old clamp that holds your work piece so that you can use both hands while stitching because saddle stitching is done with both hands. And two needles with one line of thread, as you can kind of see here. Two needles, one line of thread. You're stitching in from both sides, and that effectively makes sure that your work piece gets a nice stitch line on both the front and the back side. And that's going to be important, especially when we're doing the final stitching of the front and the back of the wallet. You want both sides to look nice. So I'm going to continue on stitching. And we'll see how this piece comes. I'm not going to go into too much detail about how to saddle stitch, just because there's countless YouTube videos of leather craftsmen out there that will teach you how to saddle stitch and they can probably honestly do a better job than I can. So I would highly advise watching one of their videos. It's not a very hard stitch to learn and once you get the hang of it, it goes pretty quickly. So we just finished up our first saddle stitch, as you saw. It's got that. We now have this flap fully functioning. Still need the stitch around the bottom and this edge, but we got to. In order to do that, we're gonna have to appear our back piece. Now I'm gonna only glue one side of the back piece at a time. And the reason I'm only gonna do one side at a time is because I want to be able to, like we discussed earlier on back piece is a little bit longer so after I glue and stitch this one side I'm then able to pull this side all the way tight and give us that little bit of slack in the middle for when the wall is full of stuff so let's glue up our first side actually before I do that so this like we saw with this stitch we had to stitch this piece before to allow this flap Got to stitch this line of these card walls, card slots, but we can't let that go through to our back piece because our money's got to be able to fit in there. So I'm going to actually prick down this edge, start that stitch line, then I'll glue onto here and stitch all the way across back here. You know, stopping in this corner. So let's do that actually. All right, so we've done this stitch line down this edge. Now we're right at this corner. Before we continue with this stitch, we're gonna glue our two sides of our cash flap together.
So we finished stitching up this whole side. Got half of it done. Now it's time for the last bit of gluing, gluing up the other side of this. And with that everybody, the wallet is complete. Finished off, we got three card slots on each side, with some extra card storage in there. A cash pocket in the back. Your standard bifold wallet. All done. Nice little handcrafted stamp. Hope you guys all enjoyed watching our Google Craft build this week. And as always, we enjoy your feedback. So please like, comment, or subscribe if you enjoyed it. Thank you. And have a great day.